On the fifth day, he saw a transatlantic whale with a square face. That's from a research paper about a 24-year-old guy known as Z. He approached a couple of researchers in the 1930s to ask if they could help him stop sleeping. He was convinced that sleep is a habit, and that with proper procedures, the habit could be broken. On several occasions, he had gone without sleep for four or five days. It's one of a whole bunch of really weird sleep experiments from 50 to 80 years ago. In this one, the guy, Z, thought that if he could be stimulated by Tars and other people to stay awake for more than a week, he'd get a second wind and never need to sleep again. He'd break the habit. So the researchers gave him a typewriter and asked him to type for 30 minutes a day, marking each minute of typing. They would compare his typing speed and accuracy as one measure to find out the effects of sleeplessness. Throughout the 10 days of not sleeping, his pulse, blood pressure and the chemicals in his pee all stayed the same. He did a bunch of intelligence tests every day and his marks barely changed. But his typing speed declined and after day 4, Z couldn't type anymore. He couldn't fixate on letters and numbers and he said his eyes were sore. Still, Z stayed up and didn't complain about mental or physical fatigue. He did become easily irritated. He started reporting hallucinations and he mistook his desk for a drinking fountain. On the last day of the experiment, he wrote a nice poem, link in the description, and when the experiment ended, he slept. The researchers concluded it was possible to go with practically no sleep for 10 days without any known physiological effects or damage to mental function. Similar studies found no known damage from sleeplessness. Now, after 50 odd years more research, we know sleep deprivation leads to depression, high blood pressure, increased risk of diabetes, weight gain, heart disease, and probably earlier death. We also know that a good night's sleep is kind of a big deal. Research from the past few years suggests we need 7 to 9 hours a night for our memory to function. If we don't sleep, we'll never learn. When we sleep, we go through cycles that last for 70 to 120 minutes. In these cycles, there are two main types of sleep, REM or rapid eye movement and non-REM. Your brain needs both of these types of sleep to consolidate memories. During non-REM or deep sleep, your brain files away the facts and practices the moves it learned that day. It consolidates them for more permanent storage. During REM sleep, your brain integrates these facts and lessons into your existing knowledge. In one study, two groups had to learn a set of new words, some real, like cathedral, and some made up, like cathedru. The sleep group memorized the words in the evening, had a recall test, slept for the night, and took another test in the morning. The no sleep group got their words in the morning, had a recall test, stayed awake for the day, and then took the second test. The subjects in the sleep group showed improved recall after sleeping the night. The no sleep group showed no measurable improvements and were worse on some aspects of recall. One week later, the no sleep group showed improved recall once they had a chance to get some shut eye. Sleep is crucial to forming short and long term memories. And fully knitting information into your memory requires 7 to 9 hours of sleep. 50 years ago, 3% of working Americans reported getting less than 6 hours a night. Now it's 30%. Cutting off the last two hours of the night means you're missing out on your most important REM time. The next time you feel like your life is over capacity, don't pull an all-nighter or a 10-day no-sleep binge. Science says it's best to sleep on it. How quickly can you subscribe to Braincraft? If you've just pulled an all-nighter, the quarter of a second it would take you to hit the subscribe button nearly triples to 800 or 900 milliseconds. If you want to test your reaction time, click the pause button right now.